your PG tips. Oh, hello there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. I've collected quite a few specialty nibs over the last year. The most recent have been these calligraphy nibs from PenBBS. And PenBBS has released a dizzying array of these since they were first introduced last spring. And now there are 10 different nib grinds in three styles, steel, 14 karat gold standard, and 14 karat gold hand engraved. The 14 karat gold standards come in models 1, 4, 8, 9, and 10. And the 14 karat gold hand engraved versions come in models 1, 2, and 4, and there are 10 different hand engraved patterns. The steel nibs are 20 bucks, the standard gold nibs are $115, and the hand engraved gold nibs aren't available yet, but it looks like they'll be priced at around 300 bucks. Daniel Chang posted a wonderful chart that itemizes all of the differences and characteristics of each of the nibs, complete with writing samples and detailed photos on the PenBBS Facebook forum, Taste the Rainbow. I'll link the document in the description below. Thanks, Daniel, for this excellent resource. In addition, I have some of the so-called long blade nibs from Kaigaloo that are very similar to the architect style nibs. If you're like me and your flexi calligraphy writing sucks, sucks. Thank you, Russ. Then you'll appreciate the lazy person's way of getting some flair into your writing style. That's one of my, my pieces of flair. <laughs> calligraphy, architect, Naginata Togi, Zoom, Stub are all specialty nibs that can give your writing some real character and flair without having to take night classes at the local community college. Christ. Seven years of college down the drain. So let's supercharge that flair right now. So today what I'd like to do is show off the four types of pen BBS calligraphy nibs that I've purchased and compare them to some other specialty nibs that I've obtained. I now have six of these Kaigaloo so-called long blade nibs. I have them in two patterns this snake type pattern and this flame type pattern. They are essentially architect grinds where the nibs make a thin vertical line and a thicker horizontal line, kind of opposite that of the stub. I've become quite partial to the architect style grind and have had my nib guru, Jack Hernandez, grind quite a few of them for me now. I'll compare the Pen BBS and Kaigaloo with my favorite architect nib from Jack, my Leonardo Memento Zero Blue Hawaii. I'll show each nib in sequence and then do a short writing sample so we can see the differences. I put the nibs in four Pen BBS pens and I'm taking this opportunity to sample some Ferris Wheel Press inks I got for Christmas. Ferris Wheel Press is a stationery and ink company based just outside of Toronto in Markham, Ontario. I got this sample three pack with Candy Marsala, Bluegrass Velvet, and Tanzanite Sky for Christmas. Plus I got two bottles of ink. One is Jelly Bean Blue and the other is Stroke of Midnight. Now I'm not going to show you Stroke of Midnight today. This is a new ink from Ferris Wheel Press. It came out last November. I was so delighted with the Jelly Bean Blue that I perused the Ferris Wheel Press website and discovered they have just released a new fountain pen. It's called the Carousel. So I wrote to them and asked if I could have a carousel for review. They wrote me back immediately and offered to send me two carousel pens, one to review and one to give away. They'll both be in this really nice dark blue called After Midnight, which is very matchy-matchy with the stroke of midnight. So keep watching for that review and giveaway. So first up is the calligraphy number one nib. Each one of these steel calligraphy nibs has different laser etchings of various animals. Calligraphy number one is a Suzaku, which Daniel spells Z-H-U-Q-U-E. It's a Chinese vermilion bird that is similar to a pheasant and is one of the four symbols of the Chinese constellations and represents the element fire. The grind on the number one is like a round triangle or a pear shape. This is very similar to a sailor Naginata Togi. So I'm not going to discuss the Naginata Togi here. 
Uh, but I am aware of what makes the Sailor Nib unique, so please don't write me about it. So this is the calligraphy. Number one. And it's in my Pen BBS 3 to 3 Amber is a Cat. And the ink is Ferris Wheel Press. Candy Marsala. So when writing with the calligraphy number one, in, in architect style, it has a thin vertical and a thicker horizontal, but you also get variation by going at 90 degrees at say 60 degrees then at 45 and then I say at 30 like that so you get variation depending on the angle of the pen to the page so you can get a fairly even with a very very low angle like that you can get a lot of thickness out of it. And with regular writing, it gives you some really nice flair. And I, um, we need to talk about your flair. Really? I, I have 15 pieces on. And next up is the Pen BBS Calligraphy Nib number two. And this is in my Pen BBS 323 Galaxy. And the ink is Ferris Will Press. Tens a night sky. Let's take a closer look at this nib. The animal laser etched on this nib is a koi fish. This nib has more similarity with the architect grind nibs in that it has a long, narrow vertical slit that creates a thin vertical and a thick horizontal line. There's no zoom characteristic where the line changes with the angle to the page on this one. The angle is pretty much predetermined and I consider that to be about a f between 45 and 60 degrees and you can actually feel it on the page when you hit that sweet spot angle. But you can see the the line variation we're getting from direct vertical. There isn't a lot of difference in terms of the angle on the vertical but with the horizontal if you hit that flat on the page angle you get a really thick line so there's lots of variation here and it has the typical characteristic when you print with it of an architect And like most architect grinds, there's a good deal of feedback with this nib. And now for the Pen BBS Calligraphy number seven. And this is in my Pen BBS 480. Amber is a cat. The calligraphy number seven has a crane laser etched on the nib. And when you look closely at the tip, 
you'll see that it's a very, very fine and has a really shallow angle uh, to that nib slope. So if the number two has about a 45 degree architect style grind, this one has the same long slit, uh, but the angle is very low, uh, 30 degrees or less, I'd say. So here we are in the Amber 480, and the ink today in this pen is Ferris Wheel Press, Bluegrass Velvet. This nib is the finest of the group that I've got. You see, it's very toothy. But what's interesting, if you get a really low angle to it, look at that. So it's like a really shallow architect grind. So when you're at a writing angle that's normal, it's like an extra fine. But when you lower the angle significantly, can't talk and write at the same time. It's a right brain, left brain thing. But you can see what I'm saying, that I get this really thick, thick line when I'm very, very low. So it's almost like if you hold it like a, a paintbrush, you can get this out of it. And if you hold it up here, you can get this out of it. So I'm thinking that artists, sketchers, might like this nib for its huge range. Extra fine in a normal writing angle and probably a double broad in a low angle like that. And then we have the calligraphy number eight and this one is 14 karat gold and it's in my 308 Galaxy. Let's get a closer look at this nib. The nib has the standard Pen BBS filigree border work and an additional design in the center of a lotus flower. Pen BBS, Shanghai, China, and AU585 representing the gold content. And buried inside the section, the rest of the nib has number 8, calligraphy, 579, 14C, and pen BBS laser etched onto it. This nib is the closest of the 10 to the standard fine mini Fudier nib, uh, which most pen BBS pens are equipped. It is, however, very soft and will give up some line variation under pressure. And the ink in this pen is Ferris Wheel Press Jelly Bean Blue. Now this nib also has an architect behavior in that it gives you a thin vertical line and a thick, thicker horizontal line and gives you a slightly broader when you lower the angle. But the real characteristic of this nib is its bounce. It is actually very soft and it's also very, very wet. I really like this Ferris Wheel Press Jelly Bean Blue. It's a deep, almost black blue but where it shades, look at the top of these loops. Maybe you can see it on camera, I'm not sure. But it fades to a sky blue and then goes into this deep, deep midnight blue. It's very, very nice ink.
So this has some good amount of feedback as well. Not scratchy at all, but feedback. And I quite like it. And I think this nib looks great on this Pen BBS 308 Galaxy with the gold trim. It is now one of the most expensive Pen BBS 308s you can get. At least until the carved $300 gold nibs are on sale. You won't see me with one of those, I don't think. So there are the four calligraphy nibs I have from Pen BBS. Now let's look at what you can get for a few bucks less. And here is my Kaigaloo. 356. And it has a Kaigaloo long blade. Which is an architect style grind. Close up you can see that characteristic long vertical slit. And this is one that has that flames motif. You can also get the what I call a snakeskin style. This is a two-tone gold and chrome, but they're essentially the same nib, same grind. And the ink in this pen is Leonardo Smeraldo. And you can see the architect characteristics. Thin vertical, thicker horizontal, Gives you that characteristic style when you're printing. And gives you some nice flair. All right, there's my flair. In your cursive writing. These nibs are $17.90 for two and come in the flame pattern or the snakeskin type pattern. And then there is a bobby nib, which he calls a calligraphy. It's basically a Naginata Togi style with that pear shaped round triangular type tip. And this nib sells for $10 on Bobby's AliExpress store called St. PPS. I don't know what the PPS stands for, but it sounds an awful lot like Pen BBS, doesn't it? And I put this nib into my Majon T5 Piston Filler. which is vaguely similar to something, I'm not sure what. And I'll be reviewing this pen very shortly. And the ink here is Diamine Midnight Hour. So again, you have the zoom type thing going on, Naginata Togi. As you lower the angle, you get a thicker line. And of course, in horizontal, you get a very thick line. So lots of line variation here, vertical, horizontal. And it gives your writing some very nice flair. And you can see what a paintbrush this nib is. It's very, very wet and gives you lots of variation. Ten bucks. And finally, we have my Leonardo Memento Zero. Blue Hawaii. And this has a broad custom architect that was ground by Jack. Fernandez. That's an R. This started out as a Bach broad nib. 
and Jack cut it into that characteristic vertical slit. You see that angle? Beautiful nib. This is just an awesome pen. So I bought it with a broad Bach nib that never really wrote properly. But a broad nib is perfect for Jack to grind into an architect. It gives him lots of tipper material to work with. And the ink here is J. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal. You can see why I love this pen so much. This is the pen that makes the inquiring minds scribble at the beginning of my videos. And there you have it. Let me know in the comments what you think of specialty nibs. Are your favorites stubs or do you like getting line character from the classic vintage gold flex nibs? If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comments section and you'll get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.